The Champions League knockouts start tomorrow, so it's time for me to pay up because I made a promise that every team I got wrong in my Champions League group stage predictions, well, we were gonna go ahead and pay a fan of that team $100. This has now ended up costing me over $1,000. We had the fans come forward in the subscriber section of our Discord not knowing what it was going to be for, and we have our list of winners. to raise the stakes of these types of videos that was a fun way to do it and we put our money where our mouth was and we ended up with a better than 50 percent prediction percentage which feels okay is it but now it's time for the knockouts and we start with psg and Bayern. Now, PSG and Bayern, excellent tie. PSG finished second in their group, which is why we have such a high-powered tie here. But that's only because PSG drew Benfica twice. They beat Juventus both times. They beat Maccabi Haifa both times, which isn't as easy as you'd think. Just ask Juventus. And of course, PSG have Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi, a rejuvenated Messi who seems to care about the French League again and has scored in a couple matches in a row. Well, on the other side, you have Bayern, who's plodding along and is top of the Bundesliga, but is struggling to win games. They've only won 11 of the 19 matches they've played, which for Bayern in that kind of brand name is pretty low. But Bayern Munich's offense, when it gets rolling, is monstrous. They have 56 goals in those 19 games in the Bundesliga, and Kingsley Coman and Jamal Musiala are not guys you want to mess around with, and PSG's defense has struggled at times to keep teams out of the back of the net. For a team that spends so much money and is so dominant, they're not actually the best defense in Ligue 1. That goes to Lens. I know my French pronunciation is famously bad, but that felt right, and you can't take that away from me. But while this may seem to be hanging on a knife's edge, the fact that Lionel Messi is rejuvenated and still seemingly the best player in the world, flanked by a fired up Mbappe and an Amar who's not missing for his sister's birthday, combined with the fact that Bayern is struggling to consistently win, and their captain, Manuel Neuer, who is injured, is saying that the Bayern front office just made the worst mistake it's ever made. Well, there's a little drama behind the scenes with Bayern, and I'm going to give this to PSG for two on aggregate. These predictions will be the final aggregate score. The next up at the same time, at least initially, is AC Milan against Tottenham, a fabulously interesting tie for an entirely different set of reasons. AC Milan is plummeting. They got smacked by Inter in the Super Coppa Italiana final. They got run over by Lazio, dominated by Sassuolo, and then lost to Inter again in the league. The last league win that Milan has at this point was Salernitana on the 4th of January. It's the type of form that can get coaches fired and players sold. And then Tottenham, they're Tottenham. While they did just beat Manchester City, they also seem to consistently lose to the very best teams and do not seem to be the best version of themselves at the moment. Tottenham will have plenty in the bucket to get through an AC Milan team in a death spiral. My pick is Tottenham 3, AC Milan 0. The third tie, Club Bruges and Benfica. Can you believe this is a Champions League round of 16 match? Seriously. I certainly didn't. I picked both of these teams wrong in the group stage and Benfica ended up winning the group with two draws over PSG. Which you might not know is Benfica is also running the Primera Liga, which is the Portuguese league. They are eight points out of Porto right now. Porto has a match in hand, but still Benfica is clear. And the reason that feels particularly relevant is Club Bruges finished behind Porto in their Champions League group, which could accurately be described as the easiest group in the Champions League this year. Still, Club Bruges finished ahead of Leverkusen and Atletico Madrid, but both of those teams are pretty severely down bad right now. Benfica has been playing better on the season. They've got the higher level of experience. They've got the higher level of ability. So I don't see how you don't pick Benfica. I mean, Club Bruges didn't win any of their last three matches in the Champions League group either. They just caught everybody by surprise early. So I have Benfica taking it comfortably 4-1 on aggregate, but huge shout out to Club Bruges. I mean, it's an amazing run. They've really lifted themselves up in European competition, just like this here desk, which was sent to me by Uplift, and it is awesome. Uplift are the sponsor of today's video, and they have completely changed the way I've been able to make content. You might have noticed that I'm standing. That's because this desk rises. Watch. We can go down right now if you want to. And it's got an unlimited number of settings, so I've saved my preset for how tall I am. I just hit one button. Wake me up, wake me up inside. Wake up. Thank you, good sir. Thank you very much. That'll do, desk. That'll do. This thing will last for a hundred years, but you don't have to get one this big. There are a whole bunch of different sizes. My brother upstairs has a much smaller version of the uplift desk that fits in his room, and you can have one of your own that allows you to stand up in-game, which 
is kind of blown my mind a little bit. Or work, but gaming is fun. So thank you to them for sponsoring this video and check out the link at the top of the description. Now actually to Dortmund and Chelsea. Now Chelsea are in trouble. We, we all know this. They're currently in ninth in the Premier League. They're not playing well and they just spent a million dollars. Normally that is hyperbole. That is a gross understatement. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars improving the team and most of those guys can't even be registered for the Champions League. So with all of the injuries, they can't register most of their players, then you'd probably be leaning in the direction of Dortmund. But Dortmund has sucked this year too, except now they don't. See, Dortmund has gotten healthy and because of that, they've gone on a bit of a tear. They beat Dusseldorf, they beat Augsburg, they beat Mainz, they beat Leverkusen, they beat Freiburg. They're starting to get a run of wins going that's climbing them back up the Bundesliga table. They're getting healthy at the right time. Sele Ushkan just returned to the team. Sebastian Haller has come back from that malignant tumor. Fortunately, he's healthy and he's playing and playing well again. And of course, in this matchup, they'll have, in my opinion, the best player on the field, Jude Bellingham. Chelsea really struggles to score, but they've got the organization and the high floor of ability to hang around. I have Dortmund 2-0 in a low scoring aggregate affair. Which brings us to the second marquee matchup of the knockouts. Liverpool, Real Madrid, and I think we might be looking at the death nail for Liverpool's serious European competition the next couple of seasons. Liverpool did a tremendous job, won its last five matches in its Champions League group stage, including one against Napoli. Huge win, very impressive when you look at it now, but Liverpool in the league recently haven't won in four. And we think Chelsea's doing bad, Liverpool's below them. The loss of Sadio Mane's really hurt the team feels like it lacks an identity. They're riding the inconsistency of Darwin Nunez and Mo Salah just can't do it all by himself. New signing Cody Gakpo just hasn't quite clicked yet for Liverpool to be the sort of catalyst to pull them out of this malaise. Uh, when I watch Liverpool, they just seem to give the ball away too easily and make stupid mistakes. That is the type of thing that a team with the gravitas and the offensive explosiveness of Real Madrid will capitalize on. Real Madrid becomes greater than the sum of its parts because of its history, because of its understanding, because of its veteran leadership, but I'm gonna give a lot of credit to Liverpool here. I think the toughness and the experience on the Liverpool side and Jurgen Klopp's tactical brilliance is gonna keep Liverpool in this game, but I think Real Madrid's gonna win it eventually. Anyway, so I think it's 3-2 Real Madrid on aggregate. Luka Modric ain't done yet, baby. He's not done yet. What is he, 45? Never done. After this, we have Eintracht Frankfurt, Napoli. Not the coolest looking tie on the surface, but Eintracht Frankfurt are good. They're the second leading scoring team in the Bundesliga, and of course, they are the winners of the Europa League from last season. They're a team that, like Real Madrid, in a lot of ways, becomes greater than the sum of their parts when they enter into European competition. But Eintracht Frankfurt's hunky-dory ability to just make plays behind guys like Daichi Kamada, that's coming up against Napoli, who is inarguably one of the best teams in Europe right now. Napoli won their first five matches in the Champions League group stage, and then could afford to just go out and lose to Liverpool essentially and still win the group. But in Serie A, there's been no contest. Napoli has gone on an absolute tear while everybody else just seems to be losing and dropping points all over the place, which means Napoli has a 13 point lead at the top of the league, which is the largest of all of the major leagues. And Napoli is doing it with an explosive offense. Right now they have 51 goals from 21 matches. They're doing it with Victor Osimhen, who if he wasn't a world-class striker before this year, definitely is this year. And Kvisha Kvaratskhelia, one of the most exciting exciting ball carrying players in Europe right now, the Kvaradana just leading things from the wing and they're pocketing goals. Now Eintracht Frankfurt is good, organized, clutch, and they can score goals, but Napoli is on a freaky tear, has a ton of talent, and has built a special team that is a dark horse to win this whole competition. I've got Napoli 5-3 on aggregate, putting away a tough Eintracht Frankfurt opponent. Ooh. Now, Manchester City and RB Leipzig. Now, Leipzig isn't its best version of itself. It's got Timo Werner back. He's back in his comfortable position. They have Dominic Sobislai, the talented Hungarian midfielder who is definitely somebody that can go box to box with anybody in the world. And they've got some toughness, some experience. You got guys like Willy Orban, even though he is a little distracted because he was identified by the German blood bank as a match for somebody with bone cancer. So he has been brought in to do that. And that's excellent from Willy Orban. He's literally saving a guy's life and taking a bit of a break from the game, but he should be back in time for Champions League play. But despite all that, everybody knows Manchester City is the more talented team. Erling Holland, Kevin De Bruyne, like these guys are 
better. The question is how focused will Manchester City be on Leipzig? I know City is desperate to finally win a Champions League, but they have an impending investigation of over 115 charges from the Premier League hanging over their head, and they're chasing the Premier League title. This is not the easiest tie to focus on, and I think because of that, Manchester City is going to start to lose a bit of its edge. Pep might be leaving at the end of the season, ton of rose rumors flying around, and very long-winded way of saying, I think RB Leipzig is going to win this 4-3. We're going to see a bit of a Timo Werner redemption arc. Leipzig plays in a way. They are a quintessential gegenpressing side from Germany. That If you aren't playing with the required intensity and understanding and passion and focus, you're going to lose. Well, I've got Leipzig. The final ties Inter and Porto. Now, Inter is coming to the end of this era that won them an Italian championship, but Milan Skriniar, he was going to move in January, then he didn't, and he's still potentially on the chopping block. Denzel Dumfries is getting all of this interest from all over the place. They have Lotaro Martinez up top, but he is just as likely to completely miss everything as he is to score a goal. Well, Porto are a tough side to figure. They won their group, which means they're technically supposed to be the favored team in this tie, but they're second in the Portuguese league. They haven't quite put it together, but Porto is just a tough team. Outside of Leipzig over Man City, this is the, <laughs> the single hardest one to pick. Now, I love Medi Taremi. He's a great forward on Porto. Steven Eustachio and João Mario, the creative players on Porto that can make things happen even against this type of opposition. But Inter's actually put together a little bit of a run. They dominated the Supercoppa Italiana against Milan. They beat Cremonich. They beat Atalanta. They beat Milan again. To me, these results have shown the right type of defensive organization recently that Inter did not have earlier in the season, which means I'm going to edge this one to Inter 2-1 in a very edgy affair. And you know we'll be back here for the quarterfinal. I hope I'm better than like 51 percent this time. It'll be very obvious if I'm not. Speaking of putting your money where your mouth is, I did start a transfer rumor to see if I could change transfer betting odds significantly on deadline day, and we succeeded. If you want to watch that story, there's the video. It was unsettling how easy it was. Very unsettling. Don't bet on transfers. We'll be back before the quarterfinals to see if I was right, but feel free to leave a comment. They are dated, so if you're going to predict it better than me, or probably worse than me, let's be honest, I just picked everyone right, then you can leave that comment in return before the quarterfinal and be like, ha ha, good work, Zealand. You picked them all right. That's, that's what you'll be saying, right?